What's up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we're coming at you each and every week with a fresh weekend to debrief an effort to send biblical truth. What better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm one of your hosts, Caleb Pearson, joining me in the host spotlight. You know her, you love her, Alicia Battaglia. Alicia, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. Thank you. Yeah, happy summertime. Thank you. My kids all were in town this weekend. and so Every single one of them? Every single wow. one of them. I was so happy. Yeah, it was... It's that's my favorite part of that my warms life. a mom's heart. Everybody's together. Yeah. Did you guys get to just do some outside stuff at your place? We did. So, good. We just chilled. It was yeah. so great. It was Simeon's birthday and then my husband's birthday yesterday. So we just kind of it was just big. One big birthday. It was bash. a party. Love it. Was it. A party. It's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Oh, thanks. Uh, so we love to bring someone wise <laughs> on the podcast. Someone really qualified to edify. Uh, we couldn't do that this week. So uh, Ben Sanford, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Pretty terrible now. Yeah, we're letting uh, we're letting anybody on. Uh, you just yeah. happen to be walking by. Um, yeah. No, he's on the schedule, planned to be here. Kim, uh, you called me. How you doing, my friend? Here. Well, because but you, you, were you on the forgot. Schedule. I was. Thank you. No, yeah, I was late. I was. Late. I wasn't going to tell people you forgot. I to, so yeah, I know. He just you, got you've me. Got I have to dish go back. back. I was going to let true. it go. Uh, how you doing, my friend? Good. Good. Yeah. Thanks good. for being here. Yeah. Uh, we're going to jump into a. Uh, you're, uh, we needed you. So <laughs> it was great. Uh, let's jump into a Sunday in review, guys, unpacking what FBC has been studying over the last several weeks uh, leading up to this past weekend with Mark in the pulpit. Uh, Alicia, I'll come your way first uh, and we'll go from there. Yeah. So this week we talked about three uh, conversion stories of how God opened their hearts. And that was really, it's, probably one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible. It's very, hmm. it's exciting and it's fun. And uh, there's just so much to, to dig into. Uh, but I love the first part of this where the the chapter, well, starting in verse six, where Mark uh, started us off with, with this Macedonian call. And to see we see the Trinity doing what the Trinity does best, which mm-hmm. is, it's just, we have the three persons of the Trinity, but they're working in unison for this, the same purpose. They're, they're, they have the same will, and that's for Jesus's mission to be continued. And so we see the Holy Spirit uh, stopping Paul and Silas from what their initial plans were and mm-hmm. redirecting them. And, um, and we, we see the spirit of Jesus that is, you know, he's not allowing them to go. Um, and uh, and then down in verse 10, we see that God had called them to preach the gospel. So uh, I just love to see the Trinity uh, in action. And mm-hmm. here it's very clearly displayed to us. And then we get to see what God does in the lives of these people, which is really fun. So let me ask you this, Alicia, when you're hearing a sermon and, and he's un, he's uncovering all three stories, Lydia, the God worshiper, the, the demonic slave girl, and the Roman jailer, mm-hmm. and he mentioned this, like he second guessed himself, should he have done three sermons and split it or should he have done it all at once? Did it feel like too much or did you f- feel like it went together well as far as? So I think Mark does a beautiful job like bringing it all together. And mm-hmm. I think that the way that he handled the passage was really well done. Um, but I really would have loved to have picked each part and each particular story and gone a little deeper in that way, yeah. because I just think that there's so much there uh, that we can. And so Ben Sanford's going to do that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, were you in the worship planning meeting for this one with him? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, actually what, this was part of, um, So at the beginning of the summer, because we knew Mike Lukens was going on sabbatical, we Mm -hmm. planned all the services Mm -hmm. for the whole summer while he's gone before he left. Okay. So this, uh, the way that Mike did that was to have each person person on the worship team um, take a a service or two and plan it out, given the passage and the psalm that we wanted to cover that's being covered in the BTC class. Interesting. And then we all got together and kind of walked through all that, critiqued it, you know, change things as needed. So Mike Lukens planned this one. Okay, nice. Yeah. So as you guys are, are planning that, it, it, it's separate and Mark's thinking through, there, there wasn't a whole lot of conversation about, we'd love for you to split these or, or devote more time to one or the other. No, 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 no. I mean, for the most part, that is that is Mark's prerogative to sure. do as he will and as 
you know, he and the elders feel like uh, as much time as they need to take on each passage. And for the most part, that's yeah. just the spirit leading him into doing that yeah. stuff. And it, it happens often. I mean, even, and I agree with you, Alicia, the way he preached this was helpful for me. I'm, I'm doing all of Acts 18 here in a couple of weeks, split into two weeks, but it, sure. it, it's good to wrestle through how, how much am I trying to chew off? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and at what point am I neglecting Scripture, or at what point am I beating a dead horse with what's being sure. said? Yeah. And that's a hard hard line so to balance. I mean, that actually kind of plays into um, what we've seen with Paul here. And Mark brought this out that Paul is a planner. He strategizes. And, mm-hmm. and we've seen ha- this in Paul's character that, um, you know, here they were planning to go north into Asia and God is putting the brakes on that. And then even backing up to the last chapter in 15, where um, he circumcised Timothy, you know, mm-hmm. just for there was a purpose and a strategy in that mm-hmm. so that um, he could be in more favor with that Jewish audience. And then mm-hmm. we'll see later that, well, in Galatians, he strategically doesn't circumcise Titus. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of our section here, we see how he purposely um, uses his Roman citizenship to leverage his, um, I guess the public, they arrested him publicly. And so they need to release him publicly. And so he's Mm -hmm. using that as a tool uh, strategically to proclaim the gospel. And so um, it just like with the planning and the strategy, it's interesting. And I'd love to get your feedback on, especially you as you're getting ready to preach on, okay, in your planning and strategy, how are you also receptive to what the Holy Spirit is doing and leading? And what does that look like? Like, how does that flesh out in your life and ministry and being, because man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. So how does that flesh out? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I I think think early and think often helps. So you can really lift it up to the Lord. Even just this morning, I was writing out some thoughts and and I've already asked Ben a couple questions about worship team and some elements of the the sermon. And I'm already, okay, Lord, let me sit on that for a little bit Mm -hmm. and and reveal that to me over the next coming weeks, that whether or not that's the direction I should take. (sighs) As you continue to read and study the passage, and then just make sure you're not deviating from what it, it can speak for itself. This this is what we're learning. We're not learning whatever 35 minutes I want to come up with. We're learning this. How can I make sure I'm not deviating from that? And it, it will come out naturally. And, and one thing I think, Alicia, that speaks to your question is, I think Mark's personality and his energy this weekend, it, he really focused on the Roman jailer. Uh, he covered all three of them, but yeah. that's the one he kind of kept coming back to. And, and I appreciated that because if you're going to do all three of them, you don't want to keep dancing back and forth the whole yeah. time. Here's the application for this one. Boom, boom, boom. Just, we read it. Here's yeah. one dude that you could picture. Like, that's the one he wanted us to picture. He said it often, and I appreciated that because we, we all could. Mm-hmm. Um, picturing a God worshiper or a demonic slave girl, mm-hmm. that's going to have 25 different images. But a sure. brute jailer who has nothing to do with the gospel and now does, I think that stood out. And, and I mean, he's seasoned at what he does. So I think that probably came natural to Mark, but it's this, it's this continual conversation, not only with the Lord and the Holy Spirit, but also with FBC's worship team. That's why anytime you're on, I like asking those kinds of questions because I hear from our listeners, like, this is good exposure. I didn't, I didn't know, how does it all work? How does the service come together? And it is very much, so we are invited two weeks in advance if we're preaching to their planning meeting. Mm -hmm. And then it's a mutual conversation based on what they have planned. So we're very much a part of the worship service. It's not the other way around. It's not, here's the sermon. They're on either end. We're we're a small part of what we're trying Mm -hmm. to convey. And Mm -hmm. there's so many strengths to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and people notice as they attend here, well, oh, wow, that song did tie in to what we read. And what we read did tie in to what we sang. And just sorry to interrupt you, Alicia, but I have been to churches and it's almost disjointed when a lot of them don't do anything like that. It's almost like the songs are totally randomly chosen and then the the sermon's totally random and then it just doesn't feel cohesive and it's like, what's the message here? Uh, maybe it's four different ones, but to really all be on the same page prayerfully mm-hmm. and for the worship team to go ahead and say, hey, we're reading this passage with you as well. What are you, what are you going to focus on? 
Um, that's an excellent place to start. Not what do you what are we reading this weekend? But clearly, Caleb, you're going to be in Acts 18. What what of Acts 18 are you going to really focus on? That's a great first question, and and I've appreciated that. Um, yeah, with the so. beauty of the whole service being the whole from the beginning to end, it is all incorporated in sure. worship. The the weakness to that. So I I would mm-hmm. I would agree that the strength is. Uh, there's a cohesiveness and there's I, ideally, you know, we are choosing songs that are reinforcing the same message mm-hmm. that Mark or you or dad or whoever mm-hmm. is teaching uh, communicates so that by the end of it, you feel like you've really solidified. That's what they wanted. Yeah. To... One big theme, one big mm-hmm. idea that we can kind of take home. The weakness to that is that means we're planning like a month out. Or so mm-hmm. and so the we have to be careful we say this all the time um that we can't be married to those ideas mm-hmm. even up to the last mm-hmm. week there have been times where mark will come to us on the tuesday right before uh he teaches on saturday and says hey this is kind of just as i'm sitting with it this is more the direction that i think i'm heading so then that Tuesday, we're redoing the sure. whole, oftentimes we're redoing that one and the next one because it changes the whole right. trajectory of where he's headed. And so I think that, you know, that plays into we're, we're trying to, we're, we're doing our best to plan and, and, you know, get things squared away so that everything can be communicated uh, in a nice, complete package that's easy to understand. But we're also just hoping that if God wants something different, then um, it'll come up. Yeah. And I love that. It's just a, once again, we see the dependence on the Holy spirit and his work, you know, these are his people that he cares about and he's going to minister to them. And it's neat that you guys are willing um, to offer your lives and your agendas and your strategies um, and just lay them at the Lord's feet. Mm -hmm. Uh, And studying acts is a fascinating one because my fleshly reaction is okay uh 20 nouns 30 names Mm -hmm. the gospel triumphed Mm -hmm. we get it Mm -hmm. like it's easy to and 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 you and i are a a little bit of unique animals in the sense that we see the planning and we're studying it and so when it is on a sunday morning we kind of know what's coming but for people our age i think that the strength of the service as well is okay if we're an expositional teaching church which we are if we're going to hammer the word of god and make sure it's speaking for itself how can they leave with okay but that did all tie in and it did make sense because worship is a great application responding to who god is is an immediate awesome application but we don't want it to be this nerdy fun fact of here's, here's what the church was sure. like in Acts. Yeah. Uh, but what does it actually look like for me? And so the more you study it and the more you get out of God's way, and the, the more I realize, well, what are we? We're a bunch of nouns and a bunch of names, and we hope the gospel triumphs. This mm-hmm. is this is how God's been doing yeah. it in, in Winchester and this, that, and the other. And so you start to say, okay, you know, I'm not familiar with these people, these towns, these cities, but I'm in one. And I can name a bunch of people mm-hmm. that I've been encouraged by. I can name yeah. a bunch of people I'm seeking to encourage. And if you have an awareness of life to, to uh, conclude that, it, it's almost a little bit harder to doubt God's up to something. Sure. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. another thing we hope for. And we can see God's heart for people just like he has his heart for us mm-hmm. at Fellowship is just this diverse group of people. We we have this wealthy mm-hmm. um woman Lydia and she's and then we also see this demonic slave girl who basically was being trafficked by her owners and Mm -hmm. where God pulled her out of that and then the life of a jailer and he he's obviously a hard hard man and powerful and God brings him to his knees and I that each one of them have a unique picture and you'd mentioned how uh, Mark kind of honed in on the jailer. And I was thinking about just for the jailer's life, it was um, a, the best and the worst day of his days. Sure. You know, like he was mm-hmm. he was absolutely at the worst day of his life to where he was ready to um, commit suicide just f- because of the honor-shame culture. But um, Paul, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, spoke life to him. And mm-hmm. he had... 
the best day of his life and that, you know, just in those very few moments. And um, so it's the fact that God um, doesn't discriminate and um, he chooses all these unlikely people of all different status and backgrounds. And here he's establishing this church in Europe now, like with these people who, Mm -hmm. how would you like... Yeah. Would we have chosen those people <laughs> to be the sure. first uh, church, you know, to start there in Philippi? Probably not, but that's how what God did. Yeah. And you look at even Mark's outline, the f- first and fifth kind of exegetical outline of the passage, a God-ordained entrance, entrance into Europe is the first five verses, and then the last five verses, a victorious exit out of Philippi. You mentioned this earlier on, the, on today's podcast, Alicia, but Paul's very type A. He's a planner. Mark alluded to that as well. And Luke is a, a, a very almost didactic, very type A writer. Mm-hmm. So it's a perfect storm in the sense mm-hmm. of, of course it's going to sound bam, bam, you know, very quick. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of, not a lot of adjectives going on, <laughs> you know, yeah. nouns, names, places, boom. And here's yeah, what happens. It's to the point. It's to the point. Yeah. Um, and, and that, and he, and I, I am glad he mentioned that this, this weekend and he has on the podcast recently too, like God uses personality. We, mm-hmm. we can, we can be appreciative and aware of that fact when we study scripture mm-hmm. so that we don't write it off or, mm-hmm. or we don't avoid it either. Um, yeah. right. because it, right. it, uh, it, I'm sure it's easy to not d- teach expositionally. It would be easier to teach topically or avoid certain books, but it's yeah. all profitable. We've talked about that all the time. Second mm-hmm. Timothy three sixteen, and God has used so many different people in so many different ways to tell his story. And so that is very heartwarming for me as, as I study it, but as we read it as well. And I've heard the same thing of people our age. Yeah. They're learning a ton about the Bible that they didn't know. Sure. One of the things that I appreciate, okay, your comment reminded me of this, but it'll sound like it's out of left field a little sure. bit. I, uh, what really stood out to me here is that Paul had Silas with him. Anytime you hear Paul, he's got Silas, he's got Timothy, he's got Titus, he's bringing people along with him. Mm-hmm. And as we're talking about this idea of, of learning what it looks like to walk in the spirit, right? To learn the word of the Lord, to, um, all these things that we've kind of touched on over the last few minutes, I think it's it's really hard to make some of those things practical in our own daily life just by reading them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really the strength of uh, discipleship, right? And Paul is super representative of that throughout all of these stories that we've read up to this point of him where he's got somebody with him that he's actively uh, investing in, but also that gets to be uh, both a passive and an active observer Mm. of how he's walking in the spirit Mm. and how he's, okay, we're going to go up to Troas. Oh, I guess we're not going to Troas. Mm -hmm. We're going this way. And how he responds to that. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. And then even his, like, so they get beat. And there's no indication that Paul... Mark brought this out. There's no indication that Paul is protesting that. You know what I mean? He's not saying a thing, at least that we know of. Right. Mm-hmm. And Silas is watch actively being beat as well and watching this guy that he looks up to and is, I would say, being discipled by in, in some way at least, mm-hmm. uh, go through that. And now he's, mm-hmm. you know, he's got a bit of an example of how to go through that, even in that moment mm-hmm. as well. I think that's just... A, a huge take through all of the book of Acts mm-hmm. and a, a bit of a um, challenge for myself, A, to continue to seek people out um, in order to observe and watch and ask questions of to get the practical side of what this looks like in daily life, but also to have people that hopefully we're bringing along behind us that mm-hmm. were just a step ahead that. Be observable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. And we see this also in the book of Acts with these households coming to faith and being sure. baptized. We saw yeah. that with Cornelius. We saw that in with Lydia, and we saw it with the jailer. And um, the the message is being proclaimed, and whole households are believing, which is family members and potentially servants and workers that are mm-hmm. around as well. And um, so I think that that speaks to. Um, 
discipleship in the home. Like yeah. that, yeah. that's where it's starting right here. And yeah. um, it's, that's, that's what God is going to use to build the church in these towns is he's using these families, these households that are coming to faith. And then the message is going to go out from mm -hmm. there. So I, yeah, that's a really uh, good observation. And that's where Mark gets his application point of what you go through as a tool to remind mm -hmm. others of who God is and, and all that stuff. And you can read now, later, Paul's letters and go, okay. Like, yeah. it's so easy to read the Timothy stuff in the New Testament mm -hmm. and be like, man, this is just some know-it-all, writing to some not know-it-all about all this stuff. But think about the energy and excitement at which Timothy would open something oh, like yeah. that from Paul. Because he, he loves them. They've been through it. It qualifies. The, the book of Acts is qualifying the New Testament writers for everything they're about to tell us. Right. And that's very helpful as we read it so that so that we don't see it as a nuisance, but that we identify with their suffering. We see what what we're going through as biblical as well. We all have an Acts type story. I don't I don't know what your persecution has looked like. I don't know what the the wonderful stories of encouragement and salvation are, what the the, the opposite side of that is, but we're all we've all had something happen to us that that the gospel is triumphing through one way or the other. And so it's almost like I'm I, I feel like I'm learning backwards sometimes where it's like, man, I've been teaching Paul's books forever sure. Sure. in so many different contexts. Yeah. But now I'm teaching the book Paul came from a little bit, and that's that's very exciting. And it's 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 making the the rest of the Bible vibrant. Um, it, it, what you can read in black and white turns color when you realize, wait a second, this is what that author went through. This is his background. This is his backstory. Yeah. Um, it helps to. I don't know if you guys have traveled. You you've been to Israel, correct? Mm -hmm. Both yes. Of you? No, I've never been. Okay. Have you been over like into Europe and? No. Oh my word. I think it really helps being in some of those areas as well. Like I was in ancient Corinth in mm -hmm. 2019 and it's, it's all ruins, right? At least the area that, that was there at that time. And they have what they believe to be the, the Bema seat where, um, you remember they, like they brought Paul in and, and this, we just went through this mm -hmm. and then they drag the proconsul out and they beat him. Mm -hmm. And so all of that is right there. And it really kind of makes you, it makes the words come out off the page and kind of fills in some of the blank space. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the context that they were in, even where they would have dragged him out, there's a courtyard surrounded by a bunch of what they think were their homes, really, really small little hovels. And there's just this huge temple to one of the Greek gods there. And so you think of that context as Paul as you're walking into these cities and seeing all of these monuments of in mm -hmm. Athens, all of these monuments mm -hmm. and temples to false gods. And it, it really uh, puts in perspective his passion towards communicating the gospel mm -hmm. and bringing people along so that they could continue that work when he wasn't mm -hmm. around and teaching them to bring people along to continue that work when they're not around mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. I remember being in Israel out on the Sea of Galilee, they, there was a, a point in the boat ride where they basically said, spin in a circle, you can see, whatever it was, you can see 55% of where Jesus walked or something like that because of, of the yeah. view in the mountains mm -hmm. and and where they know all these places were. And obviously they're traveling by foot back then. So it's like, sure, yeah. it, it's smaller than you think it is, what, what's, what happened and what's yeah. going on. And, and that's excellent for us. Which makes the size of it now that it's a globally, mm -hmm. you know right. what I mean? That the, the gospel is triumphing throughout the globe and it's globe but it's global now but yeah. when we're, when we're reading it it wasn't global and so i it's so easy for me to read right. the bible and think well it was global then but i'm just some dude in winchester i'm a local guy sure. I, that what they're doing is incredible and massive in every way and it, it must have been magnificent to mm. to travel and, and you picture them traveling quickly and far right, with right, vehicles right. or whatever yeah. your subconscious is telling Flying you right? over to yeah, oh that happened yeah. quick but and, and yeah. i think several sermons ago, I did an overlay of one of Paul's missionary's journeys with, it was like Winchester to Woodstock to Strasbourg and sure. back or something. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like, whoa, or, or, or like all of Israel is like the size of, right. I don't even remember, Northern Virginia or something. Yeah. We don't yeah. think that when we read it, no. but if we know that and we've seen it, it helps us go, holy smokes, I am in a mission field. Yeah. And it's where I've been planted. Uh, they had way more of an excuse. I have a car. 
<laughs> yeah, I, am I too busy? Yeah, uh, yeah, right. Oh my! Oh my! Tank's only and half freedom, full. Right? We're not being persecuted, right? For and that's something yeah. that'll come to a head over the next couple of weeks and sure. next month with Independence Day and stuff. What the the ability and capability we have now, and and the excuses we've found along the way, yeah, crazy, yeah. Mm-hmm. but it's motivating, motivating nonetheless. So, well, and it gives a certain degree of confidence in the Lord, right? If He did that with he, them back then, He's been doing. He can it. do that. He's with been us doing now, it, right? So and then there's a rest mm-hmm. that's available, right? Just yeah. to... it's a it's so easy to have an accidental large view of self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God's been working yeah. the whole time up to up to now, but now it involves me. Yeah. And and what what about me? It's yeah. easy to think that way, yeah. right? But it's very hard to read stuff like this and still feel maybe things have changed now that I'm a soldier for Christ. <laughs> Nothing's changed. He invited you in. Just a different context. Just do it. Yeah. Be, be, we have the example, uh, and it's not left up to us either. There, there's no ellipses at the end of Revelation. It's not like God. Let me go. Let me go out and find find my truth. Open sure. open that bad boy and and read it and say this is how God chose to reveal Himself to us, and He participated in this crazy way in this Pauline era, and we're in the Holy Spirit era now. And if we're reliant on that instead of ourselves, man, what a difference between me mentally dragging Jesus into all my interactions, stressed about it. Versus yeah, living my right, life in right, such a way right, that right. Jesus is pushing me into them. Huge difference yeah. well, between and that's the exactly two. what we see in this text. And with Lydia, she is there. They're at the river praying. Mm-hmm. They're opening the scriptures. They're essentially having a women's Bible study, you know. Yeah. And and then God intervenes. And um, and then too with the the example of Paul and Silas after they have been, you know, beaten probably the hope beaten out of them and they're in prison singing and praising the Lord. And the jailer is overhearing that and overhearing their message. And, um, and it made me think about, um, the new city catechism. My kids and I went through it a couple of years ago. This is, we didn't finish it. (laughs) It wasn't, it wasn't with flying colors, but we did go through um, most of it. And one of the questions is, what is our only hope in life and death? And the answer is that we're not our own, but we belong body and soul, both in life and death to God and to our savior, Jesus Christ. And the, the text that that references is Romans 14, seven and eight which says, for none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. And I can't help but to think that maybe Paul and Silas were proclaiming that in the jail cell where this this jailer is um, faced with life and death and he's hearing this message proclaimed and just the power of their witness after going through great suffering, um, unjust suffering on that fact, um, and the power of their example and their testimony, how God uses that to Mm. impact the lives of others is really amazing. Yeah. And as long as we've been in Acts, I mean, it it is going to come to a close and we're, we're already looking and thinking and praying over what's next. And as the gospel triumphs, it will, it will feel on greater and greater scale. And and it'll be exciting to see, to see what next is your, is Tim in the pulpit this coming week? Do you know, do you remember who it is? Uh, I I can't remember off the top of my head, but I I can find it while you're talking. Is it Mark again? Um, I know, I know Tim will be in the pulpit some, I will as well, but It'll be good to yeah. continue to unpack Acts this summer. Um, yeah, we're moving through it. Alicia, thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Yeah, Caleb, You're for... totally awesome. Ben, contrary to how I treat you on air, you're yeah. one of my dearest friends. I know. And Likewise. I love you. Uh, <laughs> as a reminder to our viewers and listeners, uh, we do this each and every week, just an opportunity to have a conversation together, uh, not just have a time every weekend where we read the Bible, but also make it personal and uh, have a conversation about it. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or curiosities about FBC and all the different stuff we offer, I encourage you to visit fbcva.org online. Uh, and you can also attend services over the weekend. Uh, the fact of the matter, everybody, is that sermons are not meant to just take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love, God bless.